sports a popular member for certain certain shores. He spoke about our one hundred million dollars cost overrun. I want to address that again. So the Bahamian people would solely understand. So when individuals like him or others speak about it, then at least they can be the judge, not you. In response to population growth on the island of New Providence, an imperative to transform and upgrade the infrastructure of the island became evident. The FNM government entered loan agreement which formed the basis but IDB funded new Providence infrastructural improvement. Now, Mr. Speaker, an IDB loan means that there must be international tendering process. So I can't take that loan and give the job to whomever I choose. The requirement is international tendering process, which means that an international entity can win that, that bid. That's what that loan means. But when one look at this particular loan, in spite of that, 70 to 80 percent of those individuals employed were behemoths. When you look around the world, Mr. Speaker, we were hit by the recession, worst recession we've ever seen. And every country throughout the world was looking to do a stimulus package. If you travel in Europe, roads being built. China, roads and infrastructure. But I don't want to say roads, infrastructure being built. New trains, new lines, new roads, new piping, electrical, Europe, China, everywhere, everywhere, France. You go to Atlanta, Mr. Speaker, the same thing. Roads all dug up, diversion. And I must give, I must give ourselves one fault, we did not manage it like you see it in the U.S. or others. There were perfect signs directing you here or there. And we take fault for that. We take fault for that. Mr. Speaker, the objective of the program was to reduce costs. <laughs> the objective of the program was to provide an efficient transportation system similar to that of Florida standard. The objective of the report of the objective objective of the program was to improve water mains and laterals, install and improve electrical and communications conduit. To decrease flooding. Decrease flooding through improvement in drainage. And I want the Bahamian public to understand that it's decreased flooding. We cannot, and let us appreciate, we cannot prevent flooding. But the objective is to decrease it and minimize it, but we cannot prevent it. It's to decrease traffic congestion for road users, and Mr. Speaker, by decreasing that for road users, we would decrease the amount of road rage that we see on our streets, which in itself can contribute to criminality. We can, the objective was to improve road safety and improve aesthetics through proper they last at one term. An initial contract, Mr. Speaker, an initial contract, an initial contract was signed in April Honourable members, stop, stop, stop. Honourable members, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, an initial contract was signed in April 2001 with Associated Asphalt. Oil prices at that time was $20 per barrel and subsequently increased by more than 500%. Mr. Speaker, the parent company of Associated Asphalt encountered problems and entered receivership. Time elapsed, and then the Christie government entered a bidding or tendering process in 2003 
the roadworks between Bethel Avenue and Howard Road in the west and Blue Hill Road in the east. Bethel Avenue and Howard Road in the west and Blue Hill Road in the east. Bahamas Hot Mix was the recommended company by the tenders board. Bethel's trucking, you were in power. Bethel's trucking was not recommended. I repeat, Bahamas Hot Mix in a clear upfront bidding process, legal, transparent bidding process was the recommended choice. Bethel's trucking was not. Before, before the final decision was made, Bethel's trucking and Bahamas Hot Mix formed a joint company. For some strange reason, they married. They married. Subsequently, Mr. Speaker, the contract was awarded to this marriage. This joint company that got married, they got the contract. And that was done on 30th of February, 2004. <laughs> <laughs> this project, so small. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, remember, I want you to follow clearly. They're talking about our cost overrun. I'm talking now about a small project from Bethel Avenue in the west to Blue Hill Road in the east. That small project had a 34% cost overrun. The, the road, the infrastructure that we speak about today is not nationwide. And they did not experience the challenges that I will outline later. Now, Mr. Quirt, Mr. Speaker, I guess I have to ask the question now that Bethel and Hot Mix, they got married under us, now that you're in. They subsequently got divorced, now that you're in. They got divorced under us, now that you're in. I, I, I guess they will remarried again. I don't know. What, what, Mr. Speaker, what is extremely rich there, further to this project, the joint venture company was awarded another contract in October 2005 to construct a new roundabout at Robinson Road and Blue Hill Road and improvements to the roundabout at Blue Hill and Howard Road. Now, Mr. Speaker, that's a short span. Robinson Road, the Independence Highway. This comprised about 0.25 miles of dual carriageway between these roundabouts, landscaping, sidewalks, drainage, and street lighting. This short project, I could walk that in three minutes. That short project ran a delay of seven months something I could walk in three minutes. Mr. Speaker, based, 0.25, based on the brief history just presented, I now wish to discuss the project awarded to Jose Capelin. This massive project included the installation of 24-inch water mains some 20,600 foot from Blue Hill Road to Fox Hill Road and Blue Hill Road South the Carmichael Road, along with 15.8 miles of newly rehab rehabilitated roads, 71 miles of utility ducts, utility ducts, and miles of sidewalks and other amenities. Amenities. I would admit, Mr. Speaker, that this project encountered numerous challenges. Some expected and some unforeseen. They encountered sinkholes, especially between Saunders Beach and the Six-Legged Roundabout. I want members who ride or drive Howard Road and John F. Kennedy 
would notice now that there are numerous sinkholes that exist now in that area. And members who live in the West would also know that the West is recognized for a number of sinkholes. The speaker, unmapped and unaccounted for underground utilities were also present. Unmapped. Underground utilities, water lines and others that you knew nothing about. Mr. Speaker, there are some government buildings, I will not call the names, but some government buildings that you and I sit in has water lines that is unmapped and have been getting, receiving water illegally for years, 15 years, unmapped. That's what we ran into. Shallow, shallow cables pipes and electrical ducts that required additional relocation and modification work. The speaker, the cables are required to be a certain distance from the surface. We met cables and lines that were not, which meant that because of where they were placed so close to the surface and for so long, as you shovel the lines automatically because of the wear and tear and the longevity of how long they were there were brittle. They were brittle, which meant that lines that you were not expected to remove and repair had to be done. That is why we ran into cost overrun. But remember, there was also need for additional waterworks due to the poor condition of the water pipes and the increased installation of a large number of service laterals which further compounded the time delays and cost overrun. The speaker, the speaker, the increase in fuel prices and the required additional land acquisition also contributed the cost over When we re review the challenges that caused the overruns, one must also review the overall benefit recognized by the completion of a substantial project such as this. Many persons, many persons living in the eastest, eastern district already experienced improvement in water pressure and quality, which would improve as the project is completed. Mr. Speaker, I want the member, the Honorable Minister of Environment, if you review his report for the Dangi, he would note that water storage contributing the East, I won't get into too much details, he can review the report, contributed to a lot of the Dangi and Mosquito problems that we faced. But now, with proper water lines, we would not have as many stars. The same problem would apply to the over the hill. That is why I support the Prime Minister when he said that he will remove all outdoor facility and ensure that water lines are, are present. Mr. Speaker, also, without the proper water lines, you are exposed to an increase in various different disease entities, such as food poisoning. And individuals in the East before have complained of yellowing of clothing, staining of clothing, etc. So their quality of life has improved. There is undeniable improvement in the quality of roadway, which would decrease the wear and tear an outright destruction of our vehicle. And Mr. Speaker, while I'm here, I want to say that in my constituency, Kalani, I would hope that the Minister of Works is listening to me. Because between Blake Road and Traveler's Rest, there are numerous pit, there are numerous potholes that I can almost sit in and almost, you'd only see my head. 
Please, Mr. Prime Minister, help us in the West. We need repairs. The roads are bad. Just repair our potholes. The individuals who live in Emerald, Emerald Bay, Munnings Drive, Munnings Drive, I look forward. I look forward. I look, I look forward to Munnings Drive being repaired. And while that's South, Southwest Ridge, as you enter Southwest Ridge from John F. Kennedy and go beyond Southwest Ridge, you enter Munnings Drive and Galani Shores. The, the, the street there is bad. Um, monies were, were to be, um, we were planning on, on, on repairing it, but it, it's bad. And those individuals who live in Emerald Shores and Kalani Shores, they, they need that street. And, and while I'm here, I want to thank, I want to thank Miss, Miss Judy. I want to thank Miss Judy DeVoe, who has done an excellent job in helping the residents in Emerald Shores and Kalani Shores by doing a lot of work to those, to, to Money Drive and assisting the individuals there. And I think she needs to be commended for the excellent work that she's done. Ms. Speaker, the benefits from the inf infrastructural improvement from the expansion of John F. Kennedy from LPIA to the Six Legged Roundabout will then again provide better water pressure and quality to residents in the east, south, and west as this includes the installation of another 24-inch water main. It was the intent of the FNM government, Mr. Speaker, knowing the hardship encountered by the motoring public and business communities adversely affected by the project to provide assistance for them. Assistance, we would hope, would still be extended by this Christie administration. You have talked, residents have complained about their businesses. We have introduced a program to assist them. Mr. Prime Minister, I would hope that you would continue to assist them. Former Prime Minister Ingram stated in a submission to this House on March 5th, 2012, and I quote, It is my view, however, that it has been vexing and tortious, and so I have determined that it would be appropriate to have an independent review of government's administration of the project. The report will be made public so that the appropriate lessons may be learnt from the experience and inform public policy in the future. Prime Minister, I ask that you follow through so that mistakes that are made in the past would not be made in the future. 